present in the Straits of Hormuz, in the region in general, we could see much higher prices than we have right now. And the higher prices are hitting us hard. Petrol now costs 14 cents a litre more than it did this time last month. An extra $7 to fill an average size tank. I definitely stick with my, my small engine car. Makes me feel poor. BP led the charge mid-morning with all major oil companies quickly matching the six cent a litre increase. 91's now just under $1.68. Premium's close to $1.73, but diesel steady at nearly $1.23. And the soaring prices are getting people out of the car and onto the bus, with Easter numbers up 22% on intercity bus services. It's just too dear. On the car, well, now that petrol's going up. Feedback we've received initially is that the increase, or the recent increase in fuel prices has had a positive impact on public transport nationwide. And more of us might be forced out of our cars. Some experts say $2 a litre for petrol probably isn't far away. Alexia O'Brien, One News. More than 8,000 patients have been dumped from nationwide hospital waiting lists over the past year. Doctors groups are appalled by the figures released to One News. Some say the number of patients affected could be even higher. 15-year-old endometriosis sufferer Letitia Grubb has been assessed as needing urgent surgery. The pain gets so bad sometimes that I actually pass out. But despite having maximum points for an operation, the Canterbury Health Boards pulled her off the waiting list and sent her back to GP care. She's one of nearly 2,400 Canterbury patients dropped off the surgical waiting list in the past year. But new figures released by National show nationwide that total exceeds 8,000. These are patients already seen by a specialist and told they need surgery, in some cases urgently. The highest figure comes from Canterbury, followed by counties Manukau with 1,400, Otago over 700, Bay of Plenty with 630 and Waitemata over 550. What's quite clear is that this is spiralling out of control. The government's got no answer to deal with the fact that so many thousands of people who need an operation are being culled from the waiting lists quietly every month. The College of Surgeons says it's appalled. These are people uh, who cannot afford to have private surgery uh, and yet cannot access public surgery, and I feel for those people. There are concerns too this figure may be conservative. Even Health Minister Pete Hodgson agrees with that. Even more than 8,000, even more than 8,000 perhaps. But he says many more are getting their surgery. Though it's hard for the 8,000 people, and I'm not happy about it, You've got to say that the system is mainly functioning when 106,000 or 7,000 people can get their surgery in any one year. But critics say that aside, what's needed is more funding. Laurie Mason, One News. A new Plymouth man who lost his legs and an arm in an horrific industrial accident says he hopes to walk again. Right now, though, he's just grateful to be alive after being caught in a waste shredder. It's a very different life now for Chris Fremont. His injuries were so horrific, doctors feared he may not pull through. He'd become trapped in an industrial shredder. A doctor had to amputate both his legs and an arm to free him. Straight afterwards, I was in a fair bit of pain. Um, I've obviously been through uh, uh, six operations, so I've been quite painful, but I've come right now. Still in hospital seven weeks after the accident, he believes the future's already looking brighter. I'd like to be um, independent as much as I can and, and do a lot of walking. When Chris gets his independence, uh, I'm looking forward to going back to work and, like you said, doing what we plan to do. Yeah. Chris doesn't want anyone else to suffer what he's going through. I'm concerned that anywhere in New Zealand where this sort of thing might happen, that it's important that people realise, you know, that it's a safety thing and, and I just don't want this to happen again to anyone. Safety and health officials are checking all similar shredders throughout the country. A full report's due at the end of next month. The shredder at New Plymouth's refuse transfer station was operated by Manawatu Waste. It's confirmed the industrial shredder has been shut down, saying it would be reckless to operate it until it's been established exactly what went wrong and why. Jennifer Curtis, One News. And the BNZ has opened a trust fund for Chris. Donations can be made at any brunch. Well, later in sports, Tony is here. Thank and you very much. let me tell you, a first test set for a <laughs> cracking finish. Yes, they're chasing 230. The pitch is not going to be easy. But once again, it's Jake to the rescue as he gets his team back into the match. He's out. 
And that's the second time David de Villiers has been dismissed in the 90s. And you think that is painful, try this for a sport. You take a beaten up car and smash it to pieces. And the rugby weekend that was the love, the affection, and the passion, and the best mo the game has ever seen. We have not missed a thing. Coming up next, though, how a drug for stronger bones could help beat breast cancer. The rotten state of our kids' teeth, why more and more of them are being pulled. And a reclusive artist comes out of hiding to talk about his international success.